Okay, cross product was actually invented by three different people at roughly the same time, trying to do three different things. Um, but calculus is born out of a certain way of looking at the cross product. So that's actually what I'm going to talk about right now. The idea is you had a source of electricity, for example, and you're trying to measure the charge at that. Um, and so what they would do is they would put a little sphere around it and measure how fast stuff was just leaving the point. Um, and the problem is, is that the energy could have been coming a certain way and, and some of the energy wouldn't leave and some of the energy would come straight out. And so what they wanted to do was cover this whole sphere with little patches that looked like little parallelograms. Um, in fact, if you actually zoomed in on it, it would look really, really flat. And what they needed, right, um, given that they had that vector and that vector was a vector that stuck straight out and had to stick straight out of the sphere because you wanted to measure the stuff coming out that was purely coming out, not the stuff that was actually swirling and staying inside. Now, so given, for example, if I call this little vector over here u and I call this little vector over here v, they wanted a vector um, that was perpendicular um, to the little patch right here. Um, now the problem is, A, it had to point out and not point in, and perpendicular could have been either, so they had to actually come up with a rule for that. Um, and they also, um, because they wanted to measure the volume of stuff coming out, they wanted the length of this green vector um, to actually equal to the area of the little patch it was actually sitting out of. And so actually that's how cross product was born in the context that we're looking at it. Remember we have a vector u, we have a vector v, we want a green vector that's pointing straight out of it, so perpendicular to both at the same time, where the length of that uh, green vector is equal to the area of the little patch it's sitting out of. Now let's just um, flatten the whole picture so we just have something like this. We have a vector u, we have a vector v. Um, we have a little parallelogram that they both form. Uh, I don't want that over there. I want arrow here and arrow here. Now, what they want is a vector, and they're going to call it the cross product. Now, remember, in order to, to describe a vector, all you have to do is actually say two things. You need to say how long it is, and you need to say um, what direction it points. Let's talk about the length first. So let's define the length of the cross product. The length of the cross product needs to be the area of the parallelogram formed by the two, like that. Now if you do this just right and you turn it like this, and you go like this and you draw this picture right about here, yes, you're going to see um, like back in geometry that this should be something like the length of the base times the height. Well, it turns out the height, right, let's see how to do this. Um, I want the sine. I want the sine of theta is going to be the height over the length of v. So the height I want is going to be the length of v times the cosine of theta, I'm sorry, times the sine of theta, thinking dot product. So the length of u cross v is the length of u times the length of v times, yes, um, times the sine of theta. That's similar to cross product. Can't even say this. That's similar to dot product. Um, and so there are relationships between the cross product and the dot product that are actually a little weird. Um, secondly, it has to be perpendicular, that's the direction, to both. Um, now the problem is perpendicular here could stick up or perpendicular could stick down and we have to have just one. And so what they, they did was they invented something called the right hand rule. The right hand rule, R H R, the right hand rule. Now the right hand rule has many ways of describing it. Um, different kinds of physics majors have different ways of describing it. But meanwhile, I just want to talk about the length of u cross v is equal to the area of the parallelogram. That's length of u, length of v, sine theta. The direction is perpendicular to both according to the right hand rule. Let's take 10 seconds and, and talk about the right hand rule. Um, will there be other little videos and there will be people in class who say they don't like this at all, but here you go. Um, the idea with the right hand rule, especially when you were talking about u cross v, is the idea is you want to put your right arm on you 
so that the fingers of your right hand curl towards V. So I'm just going to move this like this. I'm going to put my right arm on you like that. Right, so the fingers of my right hand are curling toward the second vector, and then your thumb now points the correct direction. And in this case, that means up. Right? The idea is, if I was talking about U cross V, if this was U and this was V, if U was here and V was here, I'd have to put my right arm underneath the table and then my thumb would be pointing down. So that's actually how the right hand rule works. There are many different ways of doing this, but usually, you put your arm on the first vector in such a way that the fingers of your right hand curl toward the second vector and then your thumb points up. If you don't like that kind of description, then don't do any physics. Um, but secondly, um, the right hand rule corresponds to some determinant being positive, right? So the linear algebra is just under the hood um, and it'll come back to haunt us many, many, many times. But that is the right hand rule.